Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'll be discussing the classic 1979 Australian dystopian action film Mad Max as directed by George Miller in his feature film directorial debut. Now, before I get started out with this review, I just want to give a big shout out to Prome uh, Proton Samurai, not Prometheus Gaming, that's what they used to be known by, Proton Samurai, who requested this review a little while ago, and by that I probably mean like last year. Proton Samurai is a YouTuber offering some fantastic gaming episodes from the likes of Destiny 2, Ghosts of Tushinami, and even Destroy All Humans. Apologies for the pronunciations, as always. So, if you have a chance, do check out their channel. I will leave a Proton Samurai episode uh, link to the end of this review, and we'll also place a link to their channel in the video description below. So, okay then, the movie. Here we go, Mad Max. Set in a near future dystopian version of Australia against the backdrop of a collapsing society, a band of outlaw bikers come up against one of the last remaining law enforcement units on the road. The main force patrol, the MFP. And when one of their own is killed, the Knight Rider, and no, I don't mean Michael Knight, uh, they mount a relentless onslaught of destruction, intimidation and carnage across the state. Their brutality knows no bounds, but in their blind and senseless slaughter and chaos, they cross paths with one of the MFP's best officers, Max Rotan Rock Rock Antansky Rock Rockatansky? Max Madden Max, as played by Mel Gibson, making it a personal and unleashing an unyielding force of destruction that will stop at nothing to exact his own brand of justice and revenge. Mad Max is the first in a series of four films as directed all by George Miller to some extent, with a fifth movie in the works at the time of this review. The first three star Mel Gibson in the title role, with Tom Hardy taking over for the fourth. Now, I've never actually seen the first three Mad Max movies, only ever the fourth, 2015's Fury Road, which we will of course get into in a few reviews time as I progress through this series, but indeed never seen the first three and so I was all kind of revved up to give them a go and see how Max's story started out and how this dystopian world came to be. What I would say, um, given where I now know this series ends up, this seemed well, very well plain. Not entirely bland or devoid, uh, as it certainly had an amount of flair, very much so. You could see kind of threads and elements of Miller's directorial style, particularly for this series coming through that would be later developed with finesse. But there was something about it that simply felt lacklustre. Now, of course, I've been spoilt with Fury Road, yeah? Without a doubt. And for a first attempt, and indeed a film that certainly put Australian cinema, Miller and Mel Gibson, on the map, it definitely deserves respect, and it is a worthy start for sure. Especially given the limited budget and means that they had at their disposal at the time, and the unforgiving landscape in which it is set. For me, I just never found that it really explored the dystopian aspects in any great detail. Sure, we had rogue gangs and a military-style gung-ho police force, but we also still had people going on holiday in caravans, milling around the street like nothing was going on. There were moments that gave you the feeling that something was going on with the world at large, but nothing so succinct that it made much of an impact. But I would say that from this kind of early and kind of most basic of starts, it will be interesting to see how the world kind of devolves into the total carnage we do see later in the series. We do kick things off with a pretty brutal police chase against the offending Knight Rider, who is certainly eager to be on the road, making the start of some very absolutely eccentric characters. Most of those we come across are way overcooked, right down to the shop clerks who seem to be wearing their emotions high on their sleeves along with everybody else that we meet. The thing is though, for as highly strung as everybody actually seems to be, it's not all that emotive. 
Everything is very highly enthused, but wooden at the same time. The dialogue is frantic at times, jumbled and flustered, yet dry and kind of stiffly delivered. If that kind of makes any sense at all, you know, it kind of does fit into those two brackets. It can be all a bit too melodramatic at times, almost as if it's a soap opera. Mad Max, the days of our lives. The relationships don't feel all that genuine, and as a result, the chemistry we needed to really emphasise the more poignant moments, although some still are shockingly done, never really reaches the right balance or suggestive tone. And for me, its delivery made it hard to really get to grips with any of the characters. Thematically, it does have quite the kind of clunky feel, absolutely eccentric, but random at times. It really kind of just throws you right into this world and expects you to float, with a kind of a real crash-bang-wallop approach, going in for a lot of over-the-top theatrics, like everybody's kind of blown, kind of their head gasket. But in saying all of that, some of the stunts for its time were amazing. Um, we have some real up-close and personal angles. They get right in there, getting us right up front and centre amongst the craziness that kind of prevails. The cars are cool and certainly one of the movie's more deliberate focal points. Overall, Mad Max is a decent enough entry for what it brings to the table and for what it kind of meant for cinema and those involved in general. It did bring us a very kind of very fresh-faced Mel Gibson, who's practically unrecognisable. Certainly coming across as very keen, but also trying to support a role he just hadn't quite taken to. For an action flick, although quite outlandish, it did seem quite dry and kind of hobbled together. Most of the thrills are kind of packed right at the start and right at the end, and it does take some quite some time for Max to actually get mad. Things do often escalate um, from zero to 60 pretty quickly, not always with the most rationale of basis, you know, but always over-egged. There's certainly more to this world that could have been explored here, but I do recognise this was baked on a very tight budget, and given this, I do think it certainly commands a certain kind of respect, even if not wholly pieced together all that well. Messy would be one way of describing the overall package. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Southwest Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.